So the next thing I just want to talk to you guys is about some of the um, some of the characteristics that we found with binomial expansion. So just remember, guys, we have x plus y, let's say to the seventh. Okay. So a couple things that I wanted you guys to take away from this lesson was that when you were, if you were to expand this, the first term is always raised to that that power of the binomial expansion. The second term is always raised, you know, starts at zero, and then. The first term descends as the powers, right? Go 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. And 0 ascends to my last term. I get x to the 0, y to the 7th, right? We talked about that pattern of how the powers are changing. Like the top first term always starts at 7 and then descends. Second term starts at 0 and ascends, right? So we got that. Um, the other thing I wanted you to, but just having the variables is not the whole story. There's also that coefficient. And that's why we use the, um, Pascal's triangle for that. Now, one of the things I think students get a little bit confused of is like, well, I get Pascal's triangle, like I can complete it, but then I kind of get confused as far as like which coefficients I should be using. Um, so first of all, if you need to create Pascal's triangle, hopefully you can start with at least the first two, like the, the triangle of ones that I call it. Um, and then you can complete each and every row. But some people are like, all right, I get how to complete the rows, but how do I know which row matches this? Does anybody remember the relationship that we found with the binomial expansion, how many terms it has compared to the power? Remember? I'm not sure if we talked about this class. It has one more. Yes, it, it has one extra. So if we have a power to seven, that means there's going to be eight terms here. Now, obviously, if you were to do this, like actually do it out, I'm kind of cheating because I'm keeping my lesson short. But if you were to expand this out, you'd see there'd be eight terms. So that means my row of coefficients needs to have eight terms, right? So we always start with one, and then we add these to get to the next level. Well, that's three terms, so I got to keep on going. Right? So one plus two is three. Right? That's four terms. You got to keep on going. So I'm going to stop it there just so I can cover the next thing. But you guys would see, you'd keep on doing this till you get to the eight terms, and then those are the coefficients for each of those terms. The other thing I just wanted to mention to you guys is, you know, again, what if I give you something like this? Um, let's do it this way. OK, we talked about this. Not everything is nice and easy just with um, variables in addition. Um, remember, guys, if you have coefficients of those variables or if you have a negative, to use parentheses. Okay? It, people get, usually people that get these problems wrong is somewhere part where they didn't use a grouping symbol. So the way that I write it and do it is 2x. And then just like you can do, instead of doing 5 minus 2, you can do 5 plus negative 2. Same idea, plus a negative y. Right? And, that's how, and that just helps me identify each of the terms. I have the powers. Um, it's the exact same thing, but now they are grouped together. So when I raise them to a power, um, I'm, easy, I'm, I'm better suited to evaluate them. Um, the other thing is just remember, guys, that you know, when you have something raised to a power, you're raising both of these to the power. Um, also remember that a negative number raised to an odd power is always negative, and a negative, and a negative number raised to an even power is always going to be even or positive. But that's about it. Does anybody have any other last quick questions? I want to get this test out to you guys. Yes, or Chris? So how do you get Right. So like for instance, let's say we have, let's say one of the terms is 2x, you know, um, squared and negative y cubed, right? And let's just pretend that like the coefficient here is 6. Right? So here's from Pascal's triangle, right? And then here's from the binomial ex like expansion terms, right? So you just do each one. 2x to the fourth is going to be 4x squared. Negative y cubed is going to be a negative y cubed. And then times 6. And then for we'd have a negative 24 x squared y cubed. I mean, straight from the, like, all, everything to the seventh, something like that. How do we apply Pascal's triangle to that? Same thing. Each one of these is going to be a term. You start with 2x to the seventh, negative y to the 0. Then you go 2x to the sixth, negative y to the first. It's the same process as up here. Like, I'm not sure I still understand your question. Like, you start with 
the first term raised to the seventh, negative y to the zero, plus 2x to the sixth, negative y to the first. And then remember, there's eight terms. So whatever, I'm not going to do the Pascal's triangle, but you find the eight terms, and you just put those coefficients in there and simplify. Any other questions? No? Good? Yes? No? Maybe so? OK, take everything off your desk. Except